This is News 3 Sunrise with Scott Haas and Sue Manteras. Welcome to News 3 Sunrise, everyone. It is Friday, February 16th. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We'll get to our top stories in a moment, but first, let's check in on the forecast. Johnny, good morning. Scott, Sue, good morning, and folks uh, looking forward to that oh-so-important weekend forecast, and it does look good. A little bit more cloud cover maybe tomorrow and Sunday, but we should stay dry. It is dry outside. It is also mostly cloudy. So that kept, uh, keeps us a little bit warmer than normal. 40 degrees, 73 percent humidity. Winds just a breath out of the southwest, and the barometer is strong and steady at this hour. Yesterday, we only managed to make it to 55. Today, we'll shoot for an even 60 degrees. Still a little bit below normal, but an absolutely beautiful day with some cloud cover this morning turning mostly sunny later on this afternoon. Again, the winds today will be light and variable. We'll have your complete weekend forecast, the travel outlook, two special editions of the Fredericks Fact, and don't forget weather on wheels all coming up. Sue, Scott. All right, Johnny, thank you. The manhunt for a killer is underway here in the valley this morning after a religious leader is murdered. Well, all this after a man turns a busy street into a battleground, firing a gun and taking the life of a church deacon who was just driving by. The shooting took place in the 1900 block of Cary Street near West Street. News 3's Anquidet Moon has more on how the family and the church believe faith will see them through. Bullets have no eyes. But at least one bullet managed to find Floyd Wilson, a church deacon and the son of a pastor, shot and killed in broad daylight after unknowingly driving into the middle of a gunfight. I couldn't believe it and still dream like it. It just doesn't seem real. Reality has not sunk in for his 84-year-old father, but regret has. Floyd Wilson was leaving his father's house. He called or visited every day, but this time no one was home. I'm sorry I missed him. Maybe if I hadn't went cat to a no. clothes and put them in the cleaners, no. he wouldn't have been on the road. At Wilson's church, there are no questions. Well, we to question God. He wanted it. There is only faith. It was God's will for him to be at that place at that particular time when them kids were out there acting a fool. And for the killer, there is forgiveness. I, I'm going to pray for him. I'm going to pray for him. And there are prayers for a father who must now bury the son he counted on to take care of him. And he took care of his mother until she passed. And seemed like he, uh, well, I like to say, seemed like he's going to take care of me. He was trying. He said he was. Anquanet Moon, News 3. Police say they have limited information about the gunman. He is only identified as an African-American man, about 5 feet 9 inches tall, and was wearing a light-colored shirt or jacket with a hood. If you have any information about this case, call Secret Witness at 385-5555. In a couple of hours, the jury in the Jessica Williams trial will be back at work attempting to reach a verdict in the case. For nine hours yesterday, jurors in the Williams trial sifted through pages of testimony. The jury came forward several times throughout the day with seven different questions. And one of the questions, one of the first two that actually was submitted by the jury was this one. When determining guilt or innocence on three counts, are we limited to finding guilty on only one count? If so, must we find innocence on the other two counts? The jury will deliberate over the weekend if they do not reach a verdict sometime today. In a unanimous decision, the state's ethics commission says Las Vegas City Councilman Michael McDonald did violate state ethics laws. The ruling came yesterday and claims McDonald inappropriately used his influence on the council to convince them to buy a sports park owned by his boss. McDonald understands how his actions could be seen as unethical. Uh, I, that was not my intent. Uh, Anybody who's ever lived in my ward knows that I'm very hands-on, and that was even about one commissioner, so I'm very hands-on, and I fight for the constituents, so that could have been uh, misinterpreted, but hindsight's 20-20, it wouldn't happen again. The Ethics Commission could have fined McDonald, but didn't. McDonald still faces charges on a city ethics violation next month. In that hearing, a judge could decide to remove him from office. More controversy this morning surrounding the investigation of a French man who died at the Clark County Jail. Heads of the French government feel they're being excluded from the investigation. Philippe Lemaine was forcibly restrained inside the Clark County Detention Center on January 4th. This is some of the surveillance video, and there is a picture of Lemaine right there. The Clark County coroner has ruled that Lemaine died from suffocation. The French government is upset now that most of the information about the investigation is coming 
through the media. Lemon's family is asking United States Attorney General John Ashcroft to step in and investigate his death. A coroner's inquest is scheduled for February 23rd. Timothy McVeigh's last chance for clemency is now over. McVeigh had until midnight to ask President Bush to spare his life. McVeigh's execution is still scheduled for May 16th. He was convicted of bombing a federal building in Oklahoma City. 168 people died. McVeigh's execution might be on closed circuit television, so survivors and victims' family members can watch. A new memorial museum is scheduled to open next Monday to remember those who died in that bombing. Visitors will see pictures containing the history of the federal building and a background on terrorism. The museum is located in the old General Record Building next door to where the Murrah Federal Building was located. A missing cat could be costing a young Las Vegas woman her health and you may be able to save her life by finding her missing pet. We don't normally run missing pet stories, but this one is a little different. Misty Whitaker has cystic fibrosis and even though Whitaker's house is full of other pets, one of her cats is missing and she hasn't been sleeping, eating or fighting her illness like she should because She's so worried about her cat. You know, there's quite a few people that it's, you know, it's not a big deal. It's just a cat, you know. And what can you say to them? Just like, that's everything to me as far as I'm concerned. Now take a good look. This is Hate Ashbury's picture of the cat. If you've seen this cat at all, please call Misty. Here's the phone number, folks, 434-9697. The cat disappeared last Friday night near Russell and Annie Oakley, and her doctors say the missing cat is definitely affecting her health. It happened at Lake Mead and Red Rock. Now it looks like Mount Charleston may follow suit and charge a usage fee for visitors. Heads at the U.S. Forest Service say the fee could be tacked onto motor vehicles driving to Mount Charleston to repair the facilities there and at Spring Mountain. Officials are still working out the details and discussing whether the fee is really necessary. Some suggest the implementation of a voluntary $5 fee for the use of parking lots or trails. Seven minutes after right now, your home computer may be able to help you track down benefits. Coming up, find out how getting your benefits just got a little bit easier if you're a veteran or a dependent of a veteran. President Bush is helping with the investigation of a U.S. submarine that rammed and sank a Japanese fish, uh, fishing ship. Find out what he's doing to keep such an accident from happening again. There's two notes we have received from the jury. I'll read them out loud. Again, jurors in the Jessica Williams trial asked the judge several questions. Find out what people around the courtroom are thinking now. That's coming up later on News 3, where news comes first. Beth Fisher, in a Helpline 3 report, spouses working for the same employer. Is it a setup for marital disaster? How the cliche, two's company, is becoming corporate policy at 4 After Rosie. Come out to Channel 3's Outlaw Pregame Festival. It's more than a tailgate party. We'll have a live band, food, drink, and classic cards. Try the bungee run and other exciting games. Visit the Channel 3 booth and meet your favorite News 3 anchors. The Outlaw Pregame Festival. Bring the family. This Saturday from 1.30 to 4.30 p.m. at Sam Boyd Stadium. Sponsored by Channel 3, Polo Towers, Singular Wireless, and Clark County Parks and Recreation. It's one party you don't want to miss. The XFL Extreme Training has begun because this February in Las Vegas, professional football is going to get a whole lot tougher. The XFL is coming to Las Vegas this February. Season tickets for your Las Vegas Outlaws are now available. Call 24Blitz or log on to XFL.com. You're watching Southern Nevada's number one choice for news. This is News 3 Sunrise. Welcome back, everyone. Investors jumped into the beaten down technology sector with both feet yesterday, giving the stock market a broad bounce. You can see the Dow was up 95 points. The Nasdaq was up over 61 points and the S&P 500 up nearly 11 points. When it comes to government red tape, the Veterans Administration has a reputation for having a lot of it. Veterans and their dependents are often faced with long waits and delays before getting any of their benefits. But as Greg Carson reports, the VA has just made the process a little faster 
and much easier. Penny Mims spent seven years in the Army. One day, while training in the mountains, she suffered an accident. I fell about, I guess, eight foot, eight feet off a cliff, and I rolled, and eventually they came and they got me, and the basic thing was suck it up and drive on so you're okay, and, you know, they taped me up and all that, but I wasn't okay. She ended up with a back injury that will plague her for life. I can't stand too long. I can't sit too long. I get this radiating pain in my hips. You know, sometimes my feet are numb. Because it was a service-related injury, Mims receives compensation. Her claim has produced a pile of paper. It's quite a bit. But there's good news for vets who have yet to file a claim. The process just got easier. It's called VONAP for Veterans Online Application. You fill out your claim here on the computer and then it files instantly with the Veterans Administration. That means no paper, no postage, no phone calls, no visits to the VA, and you get your money sooner. Because it is coming electronically, we don't have to worry about it sitting in a stack of mail. We will get it the day it is submitted and then we can begin the claims process. To safeguard security, you'll need a password and a login name. Security is very much built into this program. It is one reason why there has not been an application earlier than this. Although MIMS filed the old way, she's taken a look at the new online form. It's quick, it's to the point. She only wishes it had been available when she filed her claim. I'm Greg Carson. One call, that's all apparently now for the VA. You can find the new veterans online application along with information on other benefits by going to our website at kvbc.com and click on the Quicken dot com icon. Winter is not bringing any relief to the higher gas prices here. AAA reports the average cost of a gallon of unleaded gasoline has dropped four cents since January to about $1.61 here in the Silver State. Nevada and California have uh, tied for third place for having some of the highest rates in the country behind Hawaii and Alaska. A gallon of gas in Hawaii is running about $2 a gallon. Most Americans are paying about 12 cents less than we are at about $1.49 a gallon. And we were paying about $1.90 last September, so it's definitely better than where we were, but still above. I don't think it's ever going to go below $1.50 again. <laughs> it probably won't. No, Remember yeah. it wasn't that long ago? It was like $0.96. Cents. Those days oh, of under gosh, the dollar. Yeah. It wasn't that long ago. It was just a couple of years. And uh, I think there's just some type of conspiracy now to keep it at a buck fifty or above. Right there. All right. We'll dig deeper. You know, we get to the bottom of these things. That's right. I got this. Is this for me? Is that a UFO? former NFL star and Heisman Trophy winner Marcus Allen calls the city home. Did you see this? No. That's very cool. Can you guess where I'm calling from? The Las Vegas, the Las Vegas Hilton. Hilton. Absolutely, and right now outside under partly cloudy skies, 40 degrees, 73 percent humidity, winds west at 5, barometer rising 30.20 inches of mercury. In case you still haven't washed your car from the other day's rains, that's okay. Fabulous Freddy's Car Wash wants to take care of you. Plus, we've got a gift certificate from our friends over at the Excalibur for this hour's edition of the Frederick's Fact. I think that's uh, one of the new additions over at the uh, Caesars Palace. But uh, the folks over at the Excalibur want to treat you to a royal feast for two at the magnificent steakhouse at Camelot Restaurant. If you can tell me, as a child, he made such a poor impression on his music teachers that he was pronounced hopeless as a composer. Not Zam Fear, master of the pan flute. No. As a child, he made such a poor impression on his music teachers he was pronounced hopeless as a composer. Who is he? 657-3425. Dinner for two, a royal feast at the Steakhouse at Camelot at the Excalibur in 10, count them, 10 deluxe car washes from fabulous Freddy's Car Wash at the corner of Charleston and uh, Rampart. Call us now with your first correct answer. We will have that coming up in the next half hour. Sue, Scott? weekend. Okay, this hour's edition of the Frederick's Fact. Our winner, as I mentioned, uh, works at uh, the beautiful Regent in Las Vegas in Summerlin. Go over and say hi to Ken Grossman. He's one of the uh, table games managers. He knew that as a child, he being who, made such a poor impression on his music teachers, he was pronounced hopeless as a composer. Dun, 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 dun. Beethoven. Can you imagine? <laughs> Ludwig. Can you remember yeah, that? Be Beethoven, yeah. <laughs> Ludwig von Beethoven. Amazing. Even uh, his teacher, who was Hayden, by the way, thought the guy was useless. Amazing. All right. Ken Grossman, congratulations. You got 10 deluxe car washes from our friends, Fabulous Freddy's Car Wash, and also dinner for two at the magnificent steakhouse at Camelot over at the Excalibur. Next hour, a Casablanca getaway. Gift certificate from Las Vegas Harley-Davidson and a month's worth of free donuts from Lamar's all coming up with Weather on Wheels. Sue, Scott.